Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be working in Unreal Engine 4. I got a, the first person project pulled up uh, with the default blueprints and everything like that and the default content. Um, so I'm going to show you here how to create just a game time, kind of like just time being displayed, counting seconds and minutes. Uh, something pretty straightforward. Let me show you guys. So I already got it. It's counting time. Um, and obviously it, it takes a little bit for it to get to the minute because it's a full 60 seconds. Um, but I also add a functionality and when you press the space bar and the player jumps it actually stops it and when you jump again it resumes it. So we've jumped, time has stopped, jump again, time resumes. Uh, just something a little extra just so you know how to basically kind of like pause time. Um, so let me show you guys how it's done. Uh, first, we created uh, a, a new function, just draw time. And in draw time, we have a couple of variables the HUD time minutes and HUD time seconds. Um, and we append certain text with those number of values to display on screen. And uh, we have to determine whether or not the seconds is actually greater than or uh, greater than the number 9, uh, only because with, with timers, it displays the minute, the colon, and then 0 and then the number 1 through 9 and then as soon as it hits 10 it replaces that first 0 with a 1 and you know counts like normal from there so that's the only check that needs to be done and you have to kind of create a special uh, layout of how the actual strings put together I'll show you guys how to do that <clears throat> and then in the main event graph of our HUD uh, we have this section we have the begin play uh, we can set the play rate of the time just if you want to see it go faster so we can put that as 10 and then we'll see the counter go pretty fast. And then you know you can stop it. So that's all that's really there for. We can set that back to one. And then we have the game time. This is a timeline that goes from the value of zero to the value of 60 over the course of 60 seconds. Um, that keeps track of our time and it updates uh, from each second. Uh, it sets it as the largest previous integer and sets that to HUD time seconds. And once that 60 seconds is up, we add one to the minute and then we play from start again just so it keeps looping. And then to actually get the actual uh, player you know, stopping when you hit the space bar, uh, we have to go into the character uh, section. Uh, we basically have to first get a variable from my HUD. So we get all the actors of the my HUD class. We get we get those actors and cast them to the my HUD and create a variable just called my HUD. And then from there we use my HUD and we call it the stop time uh, function, which is right here. And it just flip flops between A and B to stop and play it, and it goes back and forth like that. So it's pretty quick, it's pretty easy. So let's start from scratch. All that gone. Same thing with my character. So right now, start from scratch. We don't have anything showing up. <clears throat> so let's go into my HUD. Let's first get some text drawn on the screen. Let's go right here. Let's add a function. We're gonna name this function uh, draw time. And then the first thing we're going to need to do is get some draw text. We're going to need two different ones. And we're also going to need a branch. Draw that in. Move that here. So a couple things. We're going to change the text color to white just so we can see it. And then we're going to need a font. So let's go into our content browser. Up here, I have the engine folder showing because uh, that's where all the fonts are. By default, it doesn't display. So what you need to do over here in view options, it's going to be a check. It's going to say show engine content. You can toggle that on and off. Show the engine folder. And in the engine folder, you can type in the word font in the filter. And there's going to be one here that says robo, uh, robo <laughs> to distance field. That's the one we want. So with that selected, we'll just add that asset in. Uh, scale, we're going to leave to 1. Scale position, we're going to leave unchecked. Um, and then screen X and screen Y, the best values for this situation is just 600 in the X, 100 in the Y. 
And then for right now, text will be just my name, Brady Evan Sherry. And we'll plug in the true into that. And then in our event graph, we're just going to call it draw time. So now, if we play in the editor, you're going to see my name displayed on screen. And it's right there. All good so far. So now, let's go ahead and go back into the my HUD. We're going to create two variables uh, that are going to be both integers. First one's going to be named HUD time minutes. The next one is it's going to be called HUD time seconds. Compile them. Go back into the draw time function. Uh, disconnect that branch. Uh, so the condition of the branch is whether or not the HUD time seconds is uh, less than the number 9. So let's do a get. So control, left click, drag it out. And we'll do the greater, greater than symbol. We're going to do the number 9. We're going to plug that in. So if it is greater than a number 9, we're going to need to draw the text in a certain way. Let's first get some appends going. So the first, the A section is going to say the word time, colon, and the space. The next one is going to be the minutes. So let's do a get of that, control F, click, drag, pull back just a little bit and plug it in. And it gives us an automatic conversion. And then we're going to copy and paste this amend, or append, I should say. Erase the A and put the return value of the first append into the A here. And then we're going to need a colon and then a space. And then we're going to copy and paste that one last time. Plug the A in there. And then we're going to need the variable for our seconds. So let's just grab everything, move it up just a bit. Let's get seconds. And then plug that in. We get the conversion. And then the return value is going into the text. And then true goes up there. And we're going to have to set the same information up here. So let's just copy and paste this one. Let's also copy and paste these appends. And let's also plug false into this draw text, do the return value into this text field. And then the only things we're going to need to change is that we're going to need to add a zero in. And that's it. So let's save, play an editor, and there's our time. And it's not counting anything yet because we haven't set up that functionality, but at least it's displayed on the, on the screen and we can see it. So now in the HUD, so that's it for this function. So let's just grab all this hit C to comment and we're just gonna do uh, draw time text, all we need. And then we're gonna go into the main event graph. We need to right click, let's do event begin play. We're gonna need a timeline so we could just right click, add timeline. I'm going to name this game time. We're not going to plug anything up just yet. Double click on the game time. It's just length at 60 to it. Um, we're going to make, add a new float track called the seconds. Uh, shift left click twice just to create two keyframes. The first keyframe is going to be 0, 0. Second keyframe is going to be 60, 60. And it doesn't really matter where you initially click in just because we're punching in those values manually. Uh, so don't worry about that. But there's our simple timeline. So over the course of 60 seconds, our value goes from 0 to 60, which makes sense. Let's go back to our event graph. Um, and now we need to actually set the variables that we want. So the first variable we're going to set is seconds. So we need to alt, left click, drag to get a setter. Update is going in there. So as it's updating, it's changing this value. And then the option for seconds is going to go into here. It's going to do a floor, so just so it goes to the next highest integer. Um, and that's going to count the seconds. So we can actually see that going if we play. Or not. Because we don't have anything hooked in. <laughs> so let's do event begin play, play from start. Now it should update. And it does. Now let's see if it works for the 10 second mark.
It does, but there's that weird awkward space. So let's go into draw time. We don't need a space there. So for this original one here. Now we change that. We got that updated so the 10 seconds won't pop to the left. Uh, but let's, let's finish this timeline. Let's get some minutes updating. Uh, so the minutes will update once uh, this actual you know, the actual timeline finishes because that's 60 seconds. So let's all left click drag out uh, the HUD time minutes under finished. We're going to set that and then the set is going to go back to play from start. And then we need to alt left click drag. I'm sorry, left control click drag that. Uh, do a plus for integer plus integer. Only get add one. We'll get plugged that in. And just so we can see it actually update the minutes relatively quickly, uh, we're going to grab our game time variable, left click and hold down control, drag that out, do uh, set play rate, set that to 10, just so we can see it go by fast. Save everything. The time updating relatively quickly. We should see the minute update as well. And we do. Now we really just need to add the functionality of stopping time and playing it again. Um, so that's going to be done. Uh, first, we're going to need to create a section for in this uh, My HUD blueprint. So we've got to create a custom event. So just right click, type in custom. We're going to name this stop time. Then we're going to need a, what we, they call a flip flop. So it toggles A to B, back to A to B, and you know, it goes back and forth like that. So the first time they press space bar, we want them to stop the uh, timeline. When they press it again, we want them to play it again. And we don't want to do play from start, we want to play where it left off. Because if we did play from start, uh, everything would reset back to zero. And we don't want that. Now that we have set that set up, um, since we want it done when the player jumps, we're going to need to go into the My Character Blueprint. Uh, so if you just go into Game, Blueprints, we're going to have My HUD, which is the one we've been working with, and then My Character, which is, which is what we're messing with right now. So before we do anything, uh, we're going to have to create a reference variable to the HUD itself, so we can reference that, uh, so we can reference that event stop time. So we're going to need a event begin play. We're going to need a get all actors of class. And then the actual class, it's going to be my HUD. We're going to drag out, out uh, the out actors and do a get. And then we need to go ahead and we need to create a cast to my HUD. Plug that in. And then we need to set this as a variable. So promote to variable. We're going to name this my HUD. So that's all we need to do to actually get a reference to the my HUD and its events and variables. So now we can just left click, uh, control, drag out the my HUD, do stop time. And then we got that set up. And that's all we really need to do. So let's do a comment over this, uh, creates reference variable to my HUD. So now if we compile, save, and alt P, we have time, and then if we press the spacebar, it stops it. And it won't continue until you press spacebar again. So you can just do it multiple times. Uh, but now everything's working the way it needs to. Uh, the only thing we have to do really at the end here is just change the play rate back to 1, uh, just so it counts normal. And we have it controlling game time. And we can stop it and continue it. Um, so that's everything for this tutorial, guys. I hope you learned just a little bit, um, just a little fun thing to learn and know about, just because most games they need to have some sort of time. Um, especially if it's an actual time-based game, so like Radial Impact uh, with the uh, time trial mode. Um, I made that in a different way. Um, this way is way better than the way I made it. I made mine really obscure and it didn't really, doesn't really make sense now that I look at it, but 
it works, but this way is much simpler. So I hope you guys do take something away from this. Um, but this is the end of the video. Um, definitely subscribe if you haven't. Like the video. Check out more tutorials for you know both UDK and Unreal Engine 4. Uh, definitely comment. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.